When cancer metastasizes, cells from the primary tumor find their way to other organs in the body to establish secondary colonies. During their journey in vivo, tumor cells migrate within extracellular matrices and through three-dimensional tracts or microchannels that exist between the connective tissue and the basement membrane of other tissue. This means that cancerous cells in the body are confined within small, micron-sized spaces. We wanted to examine how these confined spaces affected cell behavior. Therefore, we constructed a microfluidic device with microchannels. When cells are not confined and migrating on two-dimensional surfaces, they move by extending leading edge protrusions using actin filaments and retracting the trailing edge using myosin motors. However, for metastatic tumor cells in confinement, we found that cell migration does not require actin or myosin. In other words, disrupting actin or myosin function does not affect the cell migration speed in confining microchannels. This was a real puzzle and raised a fundamental question. How are these cells moving within these channels? From a physics perspective, this is an exciting question because it suggests that there exists a fundamentally new mechanism. One possibility that came up in our discussions is that perhaps movement of water in and out of the cell can also drive cell movement. The mechanism works like a small jet. If somehow water is flowing in at the front of the cell and flowing out at the back of the cell, the cell can translate forward. Then the question becomes, what can generate this type of water movement? It turns out that the physical process of osmosis can generate water movement across cell boundaries. Imagine that two compartments with different concentrations of proteins and ions are separated by a membrane. Water will flow from the low solute region to the high solute region driven by an entropic force. This will lead to swelling of the high solute region and a movement of the membrane forward. Cells, including cancer cells, have specialized water channels called aquaporins that allow the movement of water in and out of the cell. In order for this mechanism to work, the cell must establish different solute concentrations at its leading and trailing edges. And as it turns out, cells have a large variety of membrane channels and pumps that can move ions in and out of the cell. The ionic movements change the local solute concentration and the cell effectively pumps the water in at the leading end and pumps the water out at the trailing end. We call this mechanism the osmotic engine model. The mechanism is simple enough that we can write down some mathematics to describe the cell movement. In fact, it's possible to compute the cell migration speed from a simple set of equations. From the theoretical work, it became very clear that external solute concentration in the medium surrounding the cell is an important variable for determining the cell migration speed. In fact, by changing the external concentration, it is possible to reverse the direction of water flow and indeed reverse the direction of cell migration. This is exactly what we found in experiments. We found that by selectively changing solute concentrations at the leading end and trailing end of the cell, we can reverse the direction of cell migration. This mechanism also predicts a number of other observations. For instance, knocking down water channels in the cell will slow the cell down because it interferes with water flow across the cell membrane. And knocking down ion pumps that are responsible for establishing local ionic concentrations will also suppress the migration speed. The theory also predicts that the important membrane channels and pumps must not be positioned uniformly on the cell surface. The lead end must have a higher concentration of these membrane channels and pumps, and experiments also verified this. In this case, it is possible to directly compare theoretical predictions with quantitative experiments and test every aspect of our understanding. Through this type of quantitative experiments and modeling, we can develop better understanding of living systems in other contexts. From basic science and clinical standpoints, we have a new mechanism of cell migration and therefore a better understanding of metastasis. It is almost as if the cells have two engines, like a hybrid car. The acting myosin engine pushes the cell in nearly all situations, but in confinement, the cell can use another engine that utilizes water permeation. These mechanisms appear to be redundant, 
but may also explain why cancer cells are so difficult to fight.